He's regarded as being among Kenya's richest men. If you've heard about him, I know you know that as well. But guess what? This specific man, what caught my eye is, he's very down to earth, very humble, and he believes in Mahatma Gandhi's enoughness philosophy. I'm talking about none other than Manu Chandaria, a renowned businessman and philanthropist based in Nairobi, Kenya. Manu Chandaria, a renowned businessman and philanthropist who for nearly 70 years has dedicated himself to providing essential human services to communities in Africa. Manu Chandaria was born, raised and schooled in Nairobi, Kenya before going to the U.S. where he earned a bachelor's and master's degree in engineering from the University of Oklahoma. Chandaria applied his engineering skills to his family's small business of aluminium and steel industries, which became the platform from which the Comcraft Group would grow into a multi-billion conglomerate with a presence in over 40 countries today. The Chandaria Foundation's projects have created a legacy of healthier and better educated Africans while helping to mobilize the continent's next generation of business leaders. And now, he's the recipient of the 2022 Carnegie Medal of Philanthropy. Philanthropy is not to just only write a check and give. Philanthropy is to serve the community. And by serving the community, whether it's by money, by work, by looking after them, whatever way, that's what I call the philanthropy. And for this reason, Mr. Chandaria makes it to the Globe Traction in this exclusive interview with Pasil Telewa. I'm in the heart of Nairobi city in Kenya, and today we are so privileged to have a discussion with a Kenyan businessman by the name Manu Chandaria. Welcome to the show. Dr. Manu, how are you doing today? Fine, I'm fine, thank you. Being Sunday, it's a lazy day. What is your lazy day like? Well, now, now all the days are the same because I don't go to the office. But lots of other things keep me busy. Lazy means well, you feel that it's Sunday. <laughs> That's it. Nothing more than that. There's nothing different than Monday or Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Does does lazy to you mean mean sleeping late? Yeah. You know, waking up later than usual. No, no. Same time. Getting up same time, six thirty and six thirty. Six thirty. Yeah. Six thirty is too early. Well. That's been that's been going on for years together now. <laughs> wow. I'm so happy to, to be with you today. Most importantly, you know why. It's, yes. Yes. And um, I'm really humbled to share this experience with you. It might be a few weeks down the line, but congratulations for the reception of the Kaneji Medal of Philanthropy. Thank you. Thank you. It was, uh, it was a surprise to me also. Was it? Yeah, absolutely. Because... Uh, uh, you know, when you look at the people in the book, mm -hmm. the list of the people who have received, uh, um, I feel myself, uh, I'm a half a leg of a milliped, the a thousand leg. Uh, but somehow they decided to pick me and, and, and honor me. And how did that, be, did that make you feel? I couldn't believe that because to be in a league of people who are in this list, yes. uh, you, you should be. Uh, uh, so I asked him, I said, hey, but what about South Africa, Nigeria, Egypt? And all of a sudden you picked up Kenya. He says, it's not the country, it's the person. I said, but sure, person, but uh, must have some, isn't that the mistake? He said, no. We have done research for two years. Wow. And once we are satisfied, then we give the matter. 
so I was very surprised. I was very surprised means I'd heard about Carnegie. Well, he was one of the oldest billionaire in in in, in the United States. Yes, and I'd, and I'd studied in the United States, so I, I couldn't believe it. And I thought that maybe it's better that I see to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was very very. To me, it gave me a, a hype, you know, recognition, recognition of a Kenyan, not a single African to date. No, that gives something feeling that, oh my God, I must be doing something good. Yes, and yeah. indeed, yeah, you yeah. being the first African to receive this award, and being the 65th person in the world to receive this specific award, and I think the third Third Indian. Third yeah. Indian to receive the award. That is a big deal. Yeah, well, the, the point is that Tata family is huge and known for a long time, for years. And then the second one it was uh, Azim Premji uh, of Vipro. That's a huge. It, it, you, you cannot compare. But I, I think that it was not only uh, the money, uh, it was quality, it was involvement, it was feeling that uh, you are making a difference. And, uh, and actually what I saw, read is that the philanthropists must have sustain, a sustained record of giving, according to Andrew, you know, and the medalist must have a significant impact on a particular field national group of people either nationally or internationally so it's not it's not about you know it's not about you being small i think you you deserve it and most most importantly perhaps when we talk about philanthropy what really you know comes to your mind give us your perspective well to me i have a simple definition of philanthropy is, is to be useful to others is to help others to help others who cannot help themselves. Uh, it's not always money. Money is, plays a part. But, you know, to take interest in others, to give yourself to others, uh, it's, a, it's a... And most of us, you know, when we are bored, we are human beings, we are selfish. We, we think about ourselves. We hardly think about others. We're compelled to think about others. But I think that feeling of serving others, feeling of being helpful to others, that's the most important part. That, and and, and my, I'm a Jain by religion, which are very few people in the world. Uh, and the majority of Biyashara Street used to be over here, was yes. full of Biyashara. Yes. Uh, to me, uh, to be helpful is one part of our life. And it's not being, there is no teaching, but seeing our parents, helping others. And so to me, in, in simple word, how can you be helpful? How can you improve the others' lives? To me, that's what philanthropy means to me. Normally, when we are born, we are born like this. But when we grow and get the responsibility of our society, our hands must go like this. So instead of takers, we become givers. Giving is not that important. Important is how do you take interest. And so, to me, it was a very surprised. It's been going on for 20 years. This is about 22nd year now. Uh, every second year, they, 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 they pick four or five people. The four or five people that they pick are of world well known, like this time. So the, the point was is how, 
how well the, there must have been some reason for them to select and select Kenya and select me, which will give an example to so many others that selfless service above self is very difficult. It is. But it can be done. The only point is that uh, if you, you, don't, you don't want to get elated to so much that you forget the main cause why you, why you, you were given. True. And so to me, uh, I, I think it was a great experience. Uh, I'd taken 24 people from my family and my friends. Normally people took 10, they said, you can take 10, we'll accommodate another 10 if necessary, we'll accommodate one more if you want. So I took 24 of them. And they said, but we'll only allow few people on the stage when we give you the, the award. award. Yes. I said, fine. So myself, my wife, my daughter who had come from Geneva a day ahead to New York to make very sure that I'm comfortable and I, I can go around. And my great granddaughter who lives there and the fourth generation granddaughter and great granddaughter who will be four years now in November uh, in a few days time. Uh, we were all on the stage. And it occurred to me that what, what message am I going to give to these people? It's a huge crowd uh, and, and not some selected people of the society. Somehow I thought about it that once the garland that they gave me the medal, I took it off and given it to my great granddaughter. And that became a subject. That philanthropy should not stop at me. It should be passed on. It will be passed on one generation, the second the generation, other. the third, another fourth. She would not know what the medal was all about. But when she grows up, she'll understand the reality of lives. True. And I think reality of lives, uh, everything that's said and done, uh, when you are poor, when you are nothing, the world is cruel to you. And to me, it's not wrong. What, what drove you into philanthropy? Because I understand you are a billionaire. Sorry to use that word, but that's a fact. And uh, you have resources at, you know, at your disposal. You could have opted to you know, live luxurious life and do those sort of things. But what really drove you into philanthropy? Well, I think right from the beginning, uh, when I was studying, I was very much influenced by Mahatma Gandhi. I went in 1940, during the war time, uh, our family decided that, look, uh, Somalia is very clear near. Mussolini has joined hands of Hitler, and they might want to start from Somalia to conquer the rest of Africa. So. Our parents decided that now everybody, all the children, women, except the working men, go to India. And when I went to India, at that time I started understanding, number one, to read. How old were you then? I was at about 11, 11 years old, something like that, 12 probably. And then I started understanding, I read so much. And four years of where we lived, and then we came to Mumbai. And that is the time the impact was so strong on my mind. That how come Mahatma Gandhi, a, a barrister, studied in England, worked very famous in, in South Africa, came to India and decided to serve the country leave everything and half dhoti and make it up, no nothing on the top. And that taught us sacrifice. That in life you cannot receive, you cannot, unless you sacrifice. 
and we then think about our, our parents. They came here with nothing. They worked very hard. They sacrificed their lives. And because of that, we are here. Now, we thought about that. And that impact of Gandhi, that if a man can do so much for a country, for what? There's no gain for him. We will do everything for our gain. That made us feel. And I still remember for four years, I used to spin a little so that I can get the thread. I'll give the thread, so they'll make a textile. I'll get the textile in return. I'll get my clothes. And for four years, my wardrobe was only three shirts and two pair of pants and three underwear and one pair of socks. That's it for four years during my college time. Because if you don't give, there was a purpose behind Gandhi's Quit India Movement. And finally he said to the British, please, leave. We don't want to discuss, we don't want to argue, we don't, just leave. And to me that was a huge sacrifice for people of India. So that, that impression continued to in my head that look, I think, uh, I think that we have got it. We can make a better life for ourselves. Everybody wants to do that. But then to do better for others, most of them will always take a back step because themselves are more important. So uh, it was always in my head and my mind that look. And actually the, the story was that when I, when I reached Mumbai and yes. I shared, yeah. I started seeing this 10 story buildings, huge avenues, tram running on the car, double decker bus. I couldn't believe myself. I said, what's wrong with us? I look same like this guy. And I come from Kenya where there are hardly half a dozen buildings with two stories. Look at this. That challenge was so hard that no, it's human beings who do it. If you want to do it, we can. And then I went to, after my finishing my education, my parents decided I should go to America. <clears throat> and I still remember the first night in the United States in New York, mm -hmm. on a hotel on the 64th floor. How was it? Time difference. And I get up and say that, hey, maybe they are white than me. But look at this, 100 story building, beautiful avenue, look at this. They are human beings just like me. And that challenge hit me so hard, both Mumbai and London. And that gave me that, no, one should work for development in a big way. And so we developed in a major way in the country. <clears throat> and not only that, but at the same time, don't leave those them there. Hold their hand, lift them, so that they got a chance in their life. Just like me, I had gone from, from Kenya and look at Mumbai, I took my first degree. I went to America, I did my second degree and my master. Yeah. It can be done. But doing and then recognizing the need of others and to serve others. That's most difficult. But I think that we look for our own family, we look after them, it's okay. It's natural. But to look to whom you don't know, you know real connection. I still remember when I was the chairman of 
Street Family Rehabilitation Trust Fund of Kenyan government. Yes. I used to go to, to the slums. You know, to me, I, I couldn't believe that we can, we can do to this extent. Don't consider that they're human beings. Uh, for 10 years I was there, they extended second term, they extended third term. They said, you continue. I said, no, there's enough now. But I can walk in every slum that you want today. People will come and shake my hand. People will take photographs with me. <clears throat> Because I couldn't see the pain. And philanthropy starts from seeing that it's not yours, it's somebody else's. Yes, but you feel it. But it's still there. So if you can do something about it, that to me is a simple definition of philanthropy. Are you in touch with any of your former schoolmates? The people you went to school with, for instance, in, in the US, in Oklahoma, and Yes. In Mumbai. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, my mother was illiterate. My father was three vernacular. No speak English, no read English, no write English. If you wanted to go to a, a post office, you'll ask neighbor, will you help me? Will you come with me? And he decided at that time, that the future of my children are going to be any different, then they will get the best of education. Now, my mother couldn't, whether we put the book upside down, she would not know. Yeah. Whether we we're reading the book, she would not know. But that commitment, that no, I want their future to be different than what I am. That commitment made a possibility of what we are today. And to me, heads off to our parents who made us. Now you're saying at 6.30 is too early. He, he'll get us up at 5 o'clock and say, come on, get ready and study. In, in, in Indian, we feel that what you study in the India in the first thing in the morning remains here. But the point is that the, their sacrifice, and if I have to become somebody, I must understand that there is a pain, I may need to improve the pain. Now to improve the pain is one, directly, and secondly is to create institutions, provide money towards institutions like Nairobi Hospital, Pandya Hospital, Gertrude Hospital, Cancer Center, Moirefer Hospital, is to create capacity so that this pain could be reduced. And so I think that, uh, I, I don't know whether they've done a mistake in selecting me or not, but I think that I was the first one to receive it. After me was the only part. And then, and, and the one of the lady who also received it is yearly outgoing a hundred million dollars. What? So where is the comparison? When wow. you look at the yeah. names over here, yeah. Rockefeller, and now Mr. The big names. Mr. Gates is here. Yes. He, he is one of them. Wow. Tata family, now, you know, Cadbury family. A number of people were in this list of altogether 70 or 65 or the 65. 60, yeah. It, uh, this, it's, you know, to me, it was mind boggling. But I explained to them, and in my speech, I mentioned we came with, come with nothing and we'll go away with nothing. What, what is the most important thing you learned from your parents that has really made you to the person that you are today? The biggest lesson that I learned from them was absolutely that, look, on your success, don't get worked up. On your failure, don't get upset. 
everything is going to fit you. Get up, start. Redo again. Because you, it's not going to be 100% this way. It is going to be this way. And so, from them, the humility that everything that you do, you do not forget that quality of humility. Is to be whoever the person is, whether it's the poorest or whether it's the rich. But you remain human and your humility must be that people would recognize that this man does not have that. And that's, that's the feeling I have. The more humble I become, more happy I am. Here, look at this. This, this is a photograph depicting Mother Teresa. Mother work. Teresa, yeah. But the terrace has been here for four times in this house, set in that place. Wow. And how humble she is. That is even signed by her autograph? Yeah, she's autographed there. But you so humble that you cannot believe that people can be humble. Now at that, at that stage, a well-known figure And so the humbleness and humility is one thing that our parents pushed in inside and that made us what we are today. Speaking of humbleness, what has gotten you to be so humble? And I understand you, uh, I'm sorry to say you're stinking rich, Mr. Manu. Well, the point is that when I'm rich, yes, but then I employ it. The family employs 40,000 people. The 40,000 homes, their children, they all depend on us. Yes, richness is there. But richness is by working hard. But at the same time, there's a responsibility of these people. If I stop tomorrow, where would they go? We have today in Kenya almost three million youth facing streets every day. They are jobless. And I, I, and I always feel very hurt. Why can't I do more than what I've been able to do? So that attitude of helping others, doing something for others, gives you, I don't know, the, the, that humbleness. And when this lady, when she walked in over here at the door, and it was interesting, my daughter studied England and she did her first degree and came back here. And our family, we do not allow the women to be a part of the family in, in business, because then we have to accommodate the son-in-laws and then it'll create more more problems. Oh. We have our own problem, <laughs> yes. ourselves. Yes. But now then to extend that problem will be, because they're from other family. Yes. So she came over here and every time I came home, she would say, hi darling, how are you? Bored. I have nothing to do. I said, you, you, you can do something. So one day I said, look, my friend is helping Mother Teresa doing her first home here. Would you like to help her? He said, yes. Mother Teresa's name itself. I said, um, he said, how do you know? I said, well, that I'll tell you how I know. Uh, he said, where is it? I said, in, in the club. He said, club? No, 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 no. I don't want to go. I, I, can, I cannot manage. I said, listen, when Mother Teresa is going to the slum, so what's wrong with you? Yeah. So one day she said, okay, I'm prepared to go. So I'll ask my friend to take her with him. And she went to this first home here, uh, in opposite Karyobangi, and where 
see so there was a double decker bus and she liked and she worked and she must have met also so one day we used to have board outside manu chandaria now we don't yes so one day she had come down to have a tea with the american ambassador just in front of her home while coming out she read chandaria and it clicked look at the humbleness of the woman it clicked on him he said maybe this is something to do with priti chandaria yeah so she came over here with the boy and my wife came down and said is this by any chance the home of priti chandaria he said yes so who are you i'm your mother can you get me the photograph of priti so to 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 the photograph of priti and and she blessed and she came in oh she never so taken sweet. a drop of water but the humbleness of this woman one how would she remember she has got homes in 100 100 countries yeah how would she remember no <laughs> priti chandaria look at the humbleness look at the greatness of the lady she came over here and every time she came she came home now who are we then when you compare with people like this who are we we're nothing no but you see you see a lot of people and a lot of families that are wealthy out here they would have so much ego they would want to you know drive and have bodyguards and be in a motorcad and whatever you want to call it so it's about flashiness and everything you know so mm. it's 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 one thing that i'm noticing with you and you're very down to earth despite you know all the resources that you hold yeah but the the, the the simple reason is that you can be you you can behave the way you want but at the end of the day he knows our almighty knows and being humble and being not humble there's a lot of difference a lot not only being humble it makes you a real human then you start thinking about others so when you say business is yes business was created for the people and it became a tool for so many thousands of people and their families so to to be able to have the money and to have the ideas and thoughts and willingness to help normally doesn't go together on this street there are number of billionaires living who knows them <laughs> i don't know <laughs> so the point is that i think that is not for being that i want to be known but recognition of good work this good work will go into minds of lots of people the wife of manushandar be doing all this and many a times you know in our in our family in indian indian tradition if you're giving with right hand the left hand should not know but i i said no i put on chandaria 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 so the people can think and say hey if he's doing what's wrong with us i hope before i die i succeed <laughs> in in others to join then we'll we'll have a kenya different kenya than what we are today perhaps i would like to ask to talk about you know the support that you've been according different institutions from academia to healthcare because we understand there is a project you did at jatrud's hospital you know put on an entire wing and uh, the cancer center and so many other projects that you've done 
and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, compelled to think, what is the drive, you know, besides the fact that you have kids and your kids are grown, anyway, they'll not be using those facilities. Well, the, the point is that, they, that we decided to look at health and education. I think we provide scholarship to students for the last 35 years, 140, 50 students. We provide scholarship to the university. But when you look, the purpose of the whole thing was, can you extend yourself a little bit? And these names are for all others to think. If these men can do it, why can't I? We live a different Kenya. The billionaires, as I told you, this state only you got lots of billionaires. But as as, you, as I told you, that we are we are always so selfish, human beings, to get out of the selfishness and be with the others. And all these projects are purely for support, education, and. I sat on the Nairobi University for 25, 26 years as a, as a council member. Mm -hmm. I was then made the Chancellor of University TUK, Technical University of Kenya. Yes. That the government appointed. And then I was made a Chancellor of USIU. Now think about my mother illiterate. At 53 years, I started asking him to write my alphabet, our, our alphabet. Unless that determination and that sacrifice of those two people were there, would not be here. And to make that point that you have a hand, it can remain in a pocket or it can remain outside the pocket and extend to others. It can. It's up to you. So t tell me something, Dr. Manu, about how you met your wife. Because I understand oh. she's um, the most important thing yeah. in your life. Yeah, well, she is a, she's a great uh, supporter. She's a, she's a trustee of the Chandaria Foundation. I met her because uh, her parents were living in Thika. She was born in Thika. Mm -hmm. We were living here. Her parents uh, uh, and her father was very, very dynamic. A, a born leader, really. Again, no education, no money, but good, high values, high principles and thoughts. And so they decided to put up a plant in Thika. Uh, that plant was tenny to make leather, to, to improve the leather style. So that was the first plant, they put it up in 1932. He went to the governor and asked the governor, will you come to open it? Uh, there's a huge plant. He said, yes, I will. It's one condition, that there'll be Africans, there'll be Asians, and there'll be whites. Wow. All will be sitting on the same table. If you're acceptable, come. Governor said, yes, I will. Now that plant, you know, immediately after the 1920 depression, it started coming slowly to Kenya also. And then this marketing became very difficult. And then four told and Thika had plague. And one of the accountants who was working there was from my vill village of my mother. So she, he ran away, came to her home. You cannot say that he has come from plague area. You speak, then the whole, the whole area will be coded. So after three months or four months, he went back. And he said, listen, if you want some money, these people have got some more money talk to them and get some money. So
so they loan they loan the money and after that they say why don't you become the partner so we become partners with them so your family became partners to your wife's family their, their, their family yeah. yes uh, then my eldest brother and so why don't we just have social relation so their eldest sister aruna's eldest sister got married to my eldest brother wow then we say why don't we just make the business together so we joined all the businesses and then we went over to india and then in india our, our parents were and her his her parents and my parents both involved in speculation so whatever we see over here in a year will come in few days will go in few days so slowly slowly our a small partner mr mp shah which is the mp shah of the two mm-hmm. he was the partner of us he said i'll send you the money from africa but you have to give me the share so ultimately he became the 70% partner but, and then i fell in love with her so when was when it the after was already broken oh i see <laughs> so uh, i think i think that the point of of finding solutions in life and she has been great to me uh, Prisoner has come. Prisoner Olu has come. I don't know all, all literally kind of all the regime. Yeah. But but tell me what was your first words when you know when you felt that she's the one you wanted. Well, how was it? Well, I just wanted. I I felt a long time back that. And then I went over to America. I came back again. I saw her again, and I said, no, that, that's one I want. And then. we had a romance for about 2 3 years but then the family was against each other <laughs> but then put together again got married now the family is not together again was the family against uh, was not was the family not for the idea because of the no, business no idea, no idea, you yeah. know oh yeah mm-hmm. well this is a business issue so how did you propose after dating for three well, years after meeting i proposed and said but look there be lots of problem between the two families yeah and so that don't worry we'll sit with that yeah <laughs> now the family then decided they yeah okay go ahead their family said go ahead mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but i i think that the the point is human relationships I see you run away from that and tell me the point. <laughs> I I really want to get to understand this specific couple because it's it's where that all the storms. You've been married for how many years? 60 something? How many years we married? Yeah. 67 years. Yeah, and that's yeah. why I'm really interested to know. Yeah, how is it to get to this point? Give and take. Give and take. you can't have all the take give and take and being available for others and that goes up adds up and adds up and adds up you know as i would be myself and she'll be selfish too but then you know she might be right one day and i might be right another day so she might give up something and i might give up something it's only issue of ego If you don't have that then you you can certainly build a life and we build a life 67 years in this house we are 52 years wow yeah but that principle of give and take if not there it's only my take 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 then it would have finished long time back but it's always give and take so it's give and take how yeah. has it been raising your two children two children I, right i got two children yeah one lives in singapore yeah is it the one girl who in... is in singapore huh? is my it son. the girl okay the my son my son lives in singapore yeah my daughter lives in geneva mhm my son uh, went to stanford and then her two daughters one went to stanford then worked two years with mckinsey and now she has gone to harvard to do her mba 
the second daughter, my second granddaughter, she did finish her Stanford, and then she's now working with Ernst and Young in Los Angeles. She'll work for two years, then she'll do her masters. Uh, my daughter, granddaughter from my daughter's side, mm -hmm. uh, did her first degree in Colombia and did her MBA in Colombia. So I'm one of eight. She was one of nine, and we have only two. And my daughter is only one. And my son is also planning only to finish. How has it been for the two of you to bring up such a focused, successful family? Well, the point is that we are a joint family. We are 55 members of the family together. So uh, the strength is there. But that strength of, if I had six or eight, and my brother had six or eight, that will that'll become un, unwieldy, not be possible to manage. Yeah. So I think that uh, a restriction because of the millennium or whatever you call, a time came when they started understanding that you can't have this type of family because of a style of living our education standard has become so going high that you can't maintain six children. It's not possible. So everybody, not me alone, in our community, when you see the numbers, it's just shrinking this way. But whoever are there, very smart, highly educated, so I think that the, the, the attitude towards people and values in life are so most important. So in spite of all that I have, all that I do, I'm still a simple person. I want to remain simple as much as I can. That time I had only three pairs of clothes. Today I've got only five suits. Oh yeah, you still have the five suits five. I had? Five. Come on. <laughs> How many shoes? That's the point is that you can't wear two suits. But, but then yeah. these are expensive designer suits, right? Expensive or no expensive is not an issue. And then it's a down the line. Hand oh, over, yeah. hand over. Hand down the line. This is, is I didn't buy it. It was handed over by my, my brother who passed away. Oh, okay. Sorry. Both of a similar size, so I can wear that. So hand me down. <laughs> yes, shirt I to buy, so I buy the shirt. <laughs> but many times on a shirt, somebody will give, give me a shirt. My brother passed away here. He was a clothes horse. So, but I never had it. I just always kept it simple. So to me, that the impact of Mahatma Gandhi, sacrifice, nothing more than what you require. T t tell me, growing up, how did you envision your life? What dreams did you have? Well, all, I, I'd like to, let, let's say now, it's, I, my life is just, what, what legacy would I leave? I'd leave a legacy people would think about that. There was a man who lived, who built from nothing, to something and he did not only enjoy himself and died he did for so many others so I think the legacy will continue the Chandaria name uh, there's no they never a Manu Chandaria any place you're the only Manu but there's a Chandaria name and people will think that there is a potential because to serve humanity is not easy because we are born selfish and we want, if it's there, it's here. To turn this hand yeah. to this. It's difficult. Very difficult. But when they see, then they, we become a, examples to the community. What challenges have you faced? When oh, you're, all yeah. kinds of children. There's not a single child that 
not gone through, yeah. failed, yeah. come back again, you know. Let, let's and, talk about them because someone looking at you thinks it has all worked out no, for you. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It's a, it's a very, very challenging businesses. Uh, to build businesses was so difficult from nothing. When we came back over here, I was a manager. I was a second engineer in a plant, 40 people. And when you go home, there are 36 members of family. 40 people and six members of the family on top. And I was the second engineer. But hard work. And one time we thought, come on now, let's leave them. At the end of the day, we've got the best of education. I can be a chief engineer in no time. My brother was a food technologist, will also be in no time. My other brother was civil engineer. A cousin was civil engineer. So why should we bother about this little family? When you go home, 36 members. But we said, no, sorry. If our parents have sacrificed for their lives for us, they built what we are today. Now we have a responsibility to maintain. And, and that attitude, I don't know whether everybody has, gets it or not, I don't know, but I think this is what you call the value system. Yes. And, and we are pure vegetarian. So we, ahimsa, no killing, no eat meat, fish, no chicken, nothing, only pure vegetable, and our health is okay. But to reach in these days to to age of 40, 84 is not that easy. No, it's not. But, but here I am. So I think that 94, uh, the point, how, how, am I satisfied? Yes. Are you happy? I'm happy. Why am I happy? Is because I got this one? No. I was given OB by the Queen. I was given EBS by the President, uh, uh, President Mike Kibaki. I was given CBS by Uhuru. President Uhuru. I got this. I've been to Buckingham Palace and the wind, and she pinned it. So I've gone through all that, but that did not go into my head. To my head, to your head. No. To me, I'm still a simple, straightforward, willing to support, willing to help, extend my hand. If you are to live again, Mr. Manu, if the clock will just tilt back so that you start from year one, the first year, what would you change about your life? Well, I would, I would, um, I would do good more than what I've done now. I would think about it, and I, I, I don't think I've done enough good. Have I got the capacity? Yes, I have. Have I done enough? No. That reality, you know, to accept that reality and mentally, it's not easy. It's not. So, to me, I think that I've lived a good life. I've done a lot of work. I have a lot of people. And I've got involved in so many, so many different interests. I created this stuff. I was chairman of KM. I created the Staff and Business Council. I created Kepsa Kenya Private Sector Alliance. I created Asian Foundation. I, I was the <coughs> founding chairman of Star Eagle Center. Lot of things that kept on coming. A lot of things I've done. So I'm happy that I've not wasted my life. But have I done enough? Not enough. And that keeps me going. 
that there's still more to do. Wow, that is quite inspiring. When you talk about there is still more to do, I feel like we also need to rise up and help you do what you need to do. But perhaps, I don't know how you take, you take uh, this particular subject, you know, the preparation for your rest or the preparation for death. Are you the kind of person who is more of a realist and you know there'll be a time when you will not be there? So you have to do these things in preparation yeah. for your exit. Yeah. 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 I, I, th I think that in the family, our family, yeah. our children are built. As I tell you that this medal went on that fourth generation. Mm -hmm. when, when she gets old enough to understand what it is and the responsibility that I passed passing on. Yeah. She'll start. She'll be a much better person. Because she's exposed now when she was a baby. So all the young people when you listen, when they see, don't look at Manu Chandarya, very rich person. Look at Manu Chandarya what he built, what he's done, and how he's recognized. That's it. What would be Follow. Your, what would be your advice to the younger generation? Follow. Everybody has got a potential. Everyone. You've got to look for it. How to develop. And with good intentions and good philosophy, It'll be okay with, with, with bad aims, you'll not succeed. Lots of failure in the life. And lots of people who have made so much and well, who knows them? Who would know me <laughs> in America tell me? I have no connection with server. Why would Queen decide to give me, in 2003, an OBE? No connection. I built myself. While building, I also looked at others. And I also started taking interest in so many institutions. All this requires time, effort, work, hard work doesn't happen otherwise. So, you, you have to work for it. Nothing happens without your good intention could be good, but put work inside it, then yes, you build. So, do you, do you guys as millionaires and billionaires, you know, have functions, you're well, you come together and celebrate and, you know, do you have like a millionaire's club and those kind no, of things? No, 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 no you club don't. like that. Nothing. Come on, Mister. No, no club. I, I belong to Rotary. Oh yes. And that's it. And that's a service club. You don't. You don't have a place where you get together no, and give no, each no. other advice. No. Or how are you doing with your companies no, and I business? No, I don't. I don't join. I don't meet with them at all. Never. Wow. Because to me, yes. it can it can just put little wrong ideas in my head. Oh, I see. No, so no, I, I I don't want to be exclusively. I want to be inclusive. I want to be men walking on the street. My feet on the ground. Yeah, I don't want to be flying up and no, that's not me. And that's not going to be my children because they see me. I saw my parents, nothing, and they built something. And my children see me. They'll all be a, well, in, in one way we are all models to something good, if people accept it. People can criticize, but besides criticism, they see the work on the ground. <laughs> what is your favorite food? Today I have a vegetable which is hardly gets over here, known as parwar. Uh, 
the other day when some my friend brought and bring it to us uh, as he said it's he bought it for 600 kenes in the kilo i said what the oh, weight was 100 shillings well, well, maximum 110 shillings or 20 shillings. the cost of living has gone up but 600 because it's exclusive it not found it was some once in a while it comes yeah okay <laughs> Okay, so, I see. Today I'm having that vegetable mm-hmm. and chapati. Oh, that's your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make my day. How 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 do you spend your free time? What do you do for leisure? No, nothing. No free time. I don't read at all. I don't walk at all. All I do is think, write, dictate. That's all I do. And and do things which which will give me some sense of belonging don't go to see the movies but see them see uh, indian pop for about an hour two hours or so oh wow what gets you going mm. every day you know sometimes you wake up and you don't feel like getting out of bed you know you yeah, know the, the discipline is so deep Yeah that is you can't have that. You can't they just come on. <laughs> you just up. <laughs> that was such a wonderful ride. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for watching Globe Traction. Remember if you have a story worth global recognition, don't hesitate. Write to us through your traction at standardmedia.co.ke or the Amazon our social media platforms at Globe Traction. You can also follow me on my social media platforms at Pasil Telewa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok for more of behind the scenes. But until then, I hope to catch up with you again soon. Bye bye.